because, I mean, Thomas Jefferson did that and he was a racist, so we should probably just give the land back to France and... I didn't even think of that. You know, that's, yeah. that's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, Thomas Jefferson is a very important part of our history and we don't think that revisionist history is really helpful for educational purposes and also for remembering our history. Obviously, Thomas Jefferson is the reason Missouri is a state in the Union. Uh, the whole, like the whole Louisiana oh, purse is huge. Yeah, so we should just get rid of the whole state of Missouri then because Missouri's racist, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was part of the South. That was, yeah, slave state. Probably get rid of that too. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Thomas Jefferson made major steps to try to kind of bring about the end of slavery. Just like, I mean, Washington had slaves, but then freedom whenever he died. Jefferson, like whenever he pinned part of the Declaration of Independence, he blamed the king for perpetuating the slave trade in the United, well, the then colonies. Mm -hmm. So he was, he started some of the dialogue saying that it was an inhumane practice and that the king was at fault for perpetuating it and that we needed to start, start to like stop it. And I think that that is one of the really important things we need to remember Jefferson for. He started a lot of dialogue. He's one of our founding fathers. We can't just kind of erase him from our history. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for Prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for President! Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Have a Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. You know, I remember going to my grandmother's house all the time when I was a kid. I mean, that was our home away from home. I mean, isn't everybody's grandma's house or home away from home? So we spent a lot of time there. And um, in 1995, my mom was diagnosed with brain cancer and she was gone in two months. So she had five brain tumors. Um, she passed away uh, January 4th, 1996 and I was 17 at the time. Um, when I was 31 years old, I um, had this pea-sized lump in my face. It was kind of bizarre, but I went to the doctor and they kept telling me that, you know, it's a cyst or a pimple, not to worry about it, and I could tell it was really deep underneath the skin. And so when they opened me up, they realized that it was a tumor called pleomorphic adenoma. And that's a rare salivary gland tumor that normally presents itself like towards your neck area and your jawline. And what they usually do is they remove the whole gland. Well, mine happened to be underneath all of the nerves in my face. So here they are thinking, oh, we're just gonna, you know, pop this little, you know, lump out. And when they opened me up, it's like 
oh no, what are we going to do now? Like, this is not anything we anticipated. Another good girlfriend of mine from high school, within a week or so, she and her husband um, found, just by, I think, researching on the internet, different things, what could be causing the cancers, the autoimmune diseases, and also the birth defects that were so unusual. And they stumbled upon the St. Louis Foods Wrap Army Corps of Engineers website. What is this? What is Foods Wrap? Why are the Army Corps of Engineers a couple miles from where we grew up? What are they doing? And then we read they were spending $2 billion cleaning something up near where we grew up. Again, something we didn't even know was there. We learned um, just a horrific reality, you know, was apparently unfolding throughout our childhoods that we had no knowledge of, and that was that we had large piles of nuclear weapons waste from the Manhattan Project sitting outside exposed to the elements adjacent to the headwaters of a creek named Coldwater Creek that flowed throughout our beautiful neighborhoods. And sadly, these piles sat there for 70 years and they were allowed to blow in the wind. They were a very fine particulate. And we're talking about radionuclides such as thorium-230. We also had radium-226, uranium, you know, we have radon gas. So these things were in the environment unknown to anyone. And again, allowed to blow in the wind and allowed to wash into Coldwater Creek because again, it's set adjacent to the creek. The thing that makes this a, just a horrific, perfect storm, if you will, is that that creek flooded repeatedly. Um, when, when the piles were first dumped back in the 1940s through the 1960s near this creek, it was all beautiful, picturesque farmland. And the creek would then flood with the radionuclides in it on this beautiful farmland. Then they decided, let's sell this beautiful farmland to developers, <clears throat> let's build this gorgeous, you know, <clears throat> series of towns all around the creek. And so then when they built up the area, that's when we really had the migration of materials even more so than the flooding because they really pushed the dirt around in the soil in order to you know, excavate basements for homes and build beautiful neighborhoods and make golf courses and build schools, churches, libraries, everything. This dirt was pushed around extensively. The street my mom grew up on, Palm Drive, is where they are finding the contamination in the backyards. So we're having thorium-230 in those backyards. So that was another hot place that I played at at my grandma's. And being that my mom was 39 when she died, um, you know, and I was just a child, I will outlive her in less than two years if I'm lucky. So I have a lot to be thankful for. Um, and there's a lot of things that did not make sense earlier on. It kind of opens up all these old wounds, but now, um, now things do make sense. We've already affected four generations in a 70 year period and if we don't get it cleaned up we're going to continue to affect future generations. One of the things that I know from my personal experience is that this is, you know, it can be very emotional. There are a lot of people suffering with deep loss, um, a lot of people who are receiving terminal diagnosis right now and it's within, you know, St. Louis County's best interest to clean this up. One of the things that we're facing is that we are one of many sites around the nation. And the FUSRAP program, um, it stands for Formerly Utilized Sites Remedial Action Program. So this basically means that these sites were utilized at one time for the Manhattan Project and now they're being cleaned up under this program. The issue is that this program is not being funded um, with enough money to be able to take care of these communities that span nationwide. It's not just our our hometown. I mean, there's many other communities that are just like ours. And I think that the United States government has a responsibility to allow all American citizens to live in a safe and healthy environment. Right now, FUSRAP has just begun testing the residential area that's down creek, if you will, <clears throat> from the industrial area where the piles were stored. And they are finding thorium-230 above the established level that they have, you know, that could be acceptable in people's backyards, thorium-230. The people now, I don't believe, are being exposed to the extent as people from the past were because those original piles are gone. However, finding them, you know, finding these contaminants in the backyard is obviously still a very great concern, and we're concerned for the families who live there because they may be six inches deep, um, but you know, when people are planting gardens, people still plant gardens. You know, are they digging that up? Is it in their backyard? 
also? Or are they dinging it up and bringing all those things to the surface that could potentially affect the health of the people who live in the community now? People still have vegetable gardens in their backyard where they're eating vegetation that um, you know is planted in soil that could have thorium-230 and other radionuclides in it. So as far as modes of transport, you did not need to play in the creek, although a lot of children in this area did play in the creek when I was growing up. That was not the only way to come in contact with the radionuclides, um, dermal contact with getting it on your skin. It's more um, our concern in addition to that, but a bigger concern because it affected more people, uh, would be the inhalation, just living in the community, having no idea this was going on, and microscopic you know, radionuclides um, you know, inhaling them. The, the biggest problem that we're running into in this is there's a lot of resistance and, and to continuing the, the cleanup, and it's mainly it comes back to funding. The federal government so far has spent $2 billion cleaning up, quietly I should add, cleaning up this area in St. Louis. Um, that tells me there must have been some concern for the health of the region because why would you spend $2 billion? The more education that we can give the community, it's just the more opportunity we have to receive that additional funding uh, to help clean up, uh, hopefully, the rest of the contamination. But now, as a meeting with FUSRAP, we're very pleased with the work they're doing. They really are scientific and very methodical, and they are, they're excellent. We're very happy with the work they're doing. However, they're just at the tip of the iceberg of what needs to be done in this region, uh, this North St. Louis County region. And so we, are, we know that they are going to need many hundreds of millions of dollars to complete this project properly, and which it needs to happen because it's not the fault of the people who live here. It was part of our federal defense. Uh, wartime efforts, when anything goes, you know, with the waste, and the workers didn't even know what was, what they were dealing with. So, um, you know, the community certainly didn't know. First of all, many people aren't aware of their exposure. They have these strange, you know, health issues surfacing, and so they're not able to relay that to their doctor. When they finally do, a lot of times, you know, they've been blown off or not taken seriously enough or the health community does not know what to look for and then many times it's too late for people um, and they wind up with stage 4 cancer. We are also working with our congressional delegation to open a dialogue about getting downwinder status. Um, downwinder status is for many communities that were downwind of a lot of the test sites um, when they were testing the atomic bomb. And so some of those communities have received downwinder status. It allows for grants to come into the community, um, education for healthcare providers. We will not change our exposure. Many people, this comes too little, too late for, but we can do something good for the future so that a lot of people don't have to experience the personal losses that we have. The latest update on the terrorist attacks in Paris the French security forces have stormed the Bataclan Theater. Uh, they've killed at least two attackers, and several ambulances were on scene to cope with the victims there. We're going to be bringing you all the updates throughout the weekend. We'll be filing re reports. Our reporters will also be on the ground there in Paris, bringing you all the updates. So stay tuned, InfoWars.com, throughout the weekend. And we will see you here again Monday night, 7 p.m. Central, for the InfoWars Nightly News. Nightly News. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. 
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.